Emily placed instant noodles in front of me. There's only enough for the family. I couldn't understand what Emily was saying. And then, should we head home? Ken, with just those words, started towards the entrance. Yes. I stood up from my seat and followed Ken. I'm so sorry for everything that's happened. Like a dam breaking, I told Ken everything up until now. How suddenly Emily's attitude towards me changed. My name is Hannah Yarnold. I'm a 56-year-old homemaker. My husband's name is Ken. Ken and I worked at the same company. It was what you'd call an office romance. I was in accounting, and Ken was in sales different departments, but Ken often dropped by accounting. Ken would distribute souvenirs from his business trips to those in accounting. Ken was thoughtful and kind. Whenever I went to the sales department to check on receipts, Ken was always the first to help. Even if it wasn't his fault, Ken would always apologize. He was sincere in his dealings, and his smile was kind. I was secretly attracted to him but too embarrassed to say anything. So our relationship as colleagues continued for a while. Then, at one point, it was discovered that one of the employees had been falsifying receipts. Ken cooperated with the accounting department to uncover the truth and resolve the issue. After that, Ken invited me out for a meal under the pretext of a consolation party. I thought it would be a group going out, but it was just only us. I was surprised, but more than that, I was happy. Dinner with Ken was so enjoyable that I lost track of time. Ken and I had similar farts, such as it was fun for us to get the money right when doing bookkeeping. After that, we went out for meals and on dates several times. After about half a year of dating, Ken proposed to me. I pretended to think it over, but I was incredibly happy. I planned to keep him in suspense for about a week, but my happiness won out, and I told him, OK, the next day. Ken has always been very kind from when we first met. And even after we got married, he always thinks of me. He makes sure we have quality time as a couple. I think I'm truly lucky to have married Ken. I continued working after we got married, but I quit my job when I became pregnant with our eldest son, Tyler. Tyler's birth was difficult. He was breech. It could be dangerous for either baby or mom, the doctor told Ken. We doted on Tyler when he was born safe. Tyler was a mischievous child, leaving the house covered in scribbles, and he would take apart his toys almost immediately. Despite this, we never got mad at Tyler, letting him grow up freely and without restraint. Due to risks associated with pregnancy and childbirth, Ken and I had decided to only have Tyler. Tyler was an incredibly precious treasure to us. During his time in kindergarten and early elementary school, he was quite wild causing quite a bit of trouble for his teachers. We were warned about his behavior numerous times during parent-teacher meeting. However, as he moved into the upper grades of elementary school, he began to show more discretion and his behavior improved significantly. 
From then on, Tyler seemed to become quite the model student. He excelled academically, serving as the president of the student council. He was also the captain of his extracurricular club. He never scored below an A on any test. Yet, Tyler hardly seemed to study at home. Even when I peeked into his room, he was usually lounging around reading comics. When I asked, are you studying, he'd simply respond, yeah, I am, without looking up from his comics. However, Tyler's grades never slipped. He must have been putting in the effort when I wasn't aware. Tyler chose to attend a local public middle school and high school. Even though his grades could have easily gotten him into a more prestigious private school, he chose the public school closest to our home. Throughout middle school and high school, he consistently ranked at the top of his class and served as student council president. He went on to attend a local public university. In college, he seemed to focus more on volunteering and other activities than on his studies. When it came time for job hunting, Tyler only applied to local companies. Given his academic record, he could have landed a job at a major corporation or even an international firm. I found it curious that he chose smaller, local companies. I asked him why. I've kind of always wanted to work locally since high school. It turned out, a high school project on our hometown sparked his interest in staying local. He chose the local university and sought to deepen his understanding of our town through volunteer work. I was genuinely impressed by his thoughtful planning, having had no idea he felt this way. That's amazing, you've really thought this through. I praised him. It's nothing special. He said with a bashful smile. Tyler got his wish and secured a job at a local company, graduating from university without issue. I thought he would commute from our house, but he decided to rent an apartment closer to work. It's all about the experience. He said. He wanted to understand the challenges of managing a household on his own. Our home felt here really quiet without Tyler around. But then again, it was just like when Ken and I first got married. I decided to enjoy the quiet life with Ken again. Thanks to Tyler attending public schools, we had quite a bit of savings left. Our mortgage was almost paid off and it looked like we could settle the balance around the time Ken retired. Additionally, my parents own a broad apartment rental business. Eventually, it seems I'll take over the apartment management. We won't have to worry about our retirement. Tyler's apartment was close enough that he could visit us by bike so we didn't feel so lonely. After a few years of this peaceful life, Tyler mentioned, I have someone I want you to meet. He was 26 years old at the time. Tyler brought the woman home with him. Let me introduce you. This is Emily. Emily works in the accounting department of the same company as Tyler. When Ken and I heard this, we looked at each other and shared a laugh. Tyler and Emily looked at us curiously. While laughing, Ken started to talk about how he and I got to know each other. Listening to our story, 
Tyler and Emily also exchanged glances and smiled. Emily is petite, and when she laughs, the corners of her eyes droop down, giving her a very cute and kind impression. Emily seemed restless, looking around our house curiously. This behavior, akin to a little bird scanning its surroundings, was charming. Ken and I quickly took a liking to Emily. If we had been harsh in our judgment of her at that moment, the incident that followed might never have occurred. There was a hidden reason behind Emily's surveying of our house. Ken and I failed to notice. Pleased to meet you. Even just hearing her voice, I thought Emily was too good for Tyler, as she came across very pleasantly. Emily is a great listener, making even the usually quiet Ken engage in lively conversation with her. The four of us enjoyed a delightful dinner together. After Tyler and Emily left, Ken and I were relieved and happy that Tyler had chosen such a great partner. Somehow, I felt as though a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Tyler and Emily's relationship progressed smoothly, and they decided to get married. They held their wedding at a local venue, where they were blessed by everyone. For Ken and me, it was one of the most memorable days of our lives. However, we could never have imagined that from this point on, our lives would start to spiral into misfortune. At first, we thought it was just a coincidence, or perhaps Emily wasn't feeling well, but it seemed that wasn't the case. Her attitude towards me became increasingly worse day by day. When I tried to discuss what to make for dinner with Emily, she initially pretended not to hear me. Then, her usual response would be something like, What is it? As if it was a bother. I was intimidated by Emily's attitude. I was thinking about what to make for dinner. Emily's responses were always cold. Oh, whatever is fine. Why don't you decide, Hannah? The atmosphere was not at all conducive to discussion. It was clear that Emily's attitude had changed significantly from when we first met. And it was only towards me. More than being angry, I was perplexed. I didn't want to ruin our relationship with Emily, so I ended up being overly accommodating. Well, how about chicken curry for today? That sounds fine. Emily would end our conversations with a hint of annoyance. I quickly got started on preparing the curry. Then, without offering to help, Emily would make comments like, that ingredient, what about the spices, as if she was picking on everything I did. Ignoring her remarks, I continued to cook the curry in silence. As I cooked, I wondered if I had done something terrible to Emily. But I couldn't think of anything. Had I said something to upset her? Had I done something offensive? I tried desperately to remember, but nothing came to mind. Honestly, I had no clue. Even after that, Emily's attitude didn't change. Every time Emily treated me terribly, I would wonder if I had done something to her. But I couldn't understand why Emily was being so awful towards me. I felt like the reason for Emily's change in attitude wasn't me but something else. This was just a hunch, with no certainty. A year passed, 
and Emily's attitude towards me remained the same. On the contrary, it had gotten even worse. Hey, Hannah, this dish looks awful. Emily began to openly criticize my cooking. She now openly insulted me. The seasoning looks too strong, and doesn't it look bad? I couldn't help but tark back. Well, that's how we always cook it here. Emily would snort at my words and mock me. Oh really? How lame. I was honestly quite irritated by Emily's attitude. If you're going to complain that much, why don't you try cooking by yourself next time? Scary, you are so scary. Emily exaggeratedly acted frightened. Loudly enough for Ken and Tyler in the living room to hear, perhaps intentionally. I was scared of Emily's calculated behavior. Anyway, Emily's attitude was only visible when we were alone. She kept making provoking remarks towards me. I fought about consulting Ken or Tyler many times. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Emily was exceedingly devoted to Ken. And she got along well with Tyler too. So, I thought I just had to endure it. I didn't want to ruin the relationship. Today's dinner is oven baked rock fish, made by Hannah. Emily served the dish with an incredible smile. After being bombarded with sarcasm by Emily in the kitchen, I could only force a wry smile. It looks delicious. Ken said as he took his seat. Tyler smiled as well. Hannah can cook delicious meals, and she's great at laundry and cleaning. I really admire her. Emily turned to me with a smile. Honestly, I felt sick. Hannah, you're really amazing. Ken and Tyler, unaware of Emily's hidden face, looked on fondly as she praised me. Thank you. I responded with a forced smile. To an outsider, my expression might have seemed awkward. Seeing Emily's smile, one wouldn't think she treated me terribly. The best I can expect is to be accused of lying. I feared being labeled a liar by Ken and Tyler. I thought if I kept enduring without consulting anyone, Emily's attitude might change. However, Emily's harsh words and attitude towards me never ceased. Emily continued to complain about my cooking being awful. Yet, she did nothing herself. She didn't even clean up after meals. And if there's even the slightest thing wrong, she's quick to complain. One day, Emily threw unbearable words at me. Hannah, are you sane with that seasoning? Unable to hold back, I retorted to Emily. Got a problem? Emily, as always, pretended to be shockingly surprised. Eh, nothing at all. Scary. What's with that tone? Stop mocking me already. It seemed like my serious gaze made Emily flinch a bit. I'm not mocking. Emily muttered, biting her lip and glaring at me. It's always so unpleasant. I continued. Shut up, a woman like you. It was as if Emily's facade had slipped. Suddenly, her face twisted into ugliness. Being treated roughly is just right for you? Emily continued to hurl insults at me. Really tacky, not good looking, and a bad personality too. You being a mill is unbelievable. 
Emily couldn't stop bad-mouthing me. To mock me to this extent must mean she really dislikes me. But still, I can't understand the nerve to say such terrible things, even to someone you dislike. Then, I think, she should just not come over and keep her distance. I became sad. It's sad to think you felt that way. Emily yelled out as if she was upset. Well, really, I've had enough. Hey, are you okay? From the living room, Tyler called out. Emily's loud voice had reached the living room. Heard a loud voice? As Emily and I were arguing, Tyler came from the living room to the kitchen. Seeing Tyler's face, Emily seemed to regain her composure. Sorry, there was a cockroach? I also matched Emily's tone. That's right, sorry for being noisy. We'll handle the cockroach ourselves, it's fine. Emily said, pushing Tyler's back towards the living room. So, so. Tyler said, then went back to the living room. Neither Emily nor I had any intention of involving Tyler and Ken. This was a problem between Emily and me. Afterwards, the relationship between me and Emily remained unchanged. An unpleasant mood continued to linger between us. However, about six months later, happy news came into Tyler's family. Tyler and Emily were expecting a child. I hoped this would change the relationship with Emily. After getting pregnant, Emily was cautious and drastically reduced her visits to our house. I finally got back to a peaceful daily life for the first time in a while. While Emily was away, I kept thinking about why she had changed her attitude. I couldn't think of anything that might have caused it. There was just one thing that bothered me, but could that really have upset her so much? Shaking my head in disbelief, I went out shopping. When Emily entered her second trimester, she and Tyler came over to our house. I had thought that with a baby on the way, Emily's attitude would have settled down. But I was too optimistic. As soon as she saw me, Emily reverted to her terrible behavior. You know, unlike you, everything's going smoothly with my pregnancy. Please rest on the couch because you need to take care of yourself. I told Emily that. But Emily just hurled insults at me. No way. If I let you cook, who knows what we'd end up eating. And then, unbelievably, Emily said, I need to keep an eye on things. What does she mean by keep an eye? Did Emily really see me that way? You can talk back if you want, but I'm fine no matter what you who could only have one child say. Oh, is that so? I replied, trying to keep a calm exterior, but I was not at peace inside. I felt guilty for not being able to give Tyler a sibling. Deep down, I felt sorry for Tyler. I compensated by pouring all my love into him and ensuring we spent a lot of quality time together. Ken and I could live a relaxed life together. I had no regrets about that. As I fell silent, Emily piled on more complaints. That reaction. Can't even talk back. How lame. I didn't understand what Emily wanted or why she was doing this. Deciding I couldn't deal with it anymore, I chose to ignore her. Months later, Tyler and Emily had a healthy baby girl. 
For Ken and me, she was our first grandchild. We were overjoyed. We eagerly awaited the day we could meet our granddaughter. I hoped that having a child would improve my relationship with Emily. With my experience in child rearing, I could teach her a lot. But my hopes were dashed. This became clear during our granddaughter's introduction party. The truth behind Emily's actions was also revealed. A week after Emily and the baby came home from the hospital, Ken and I rushed to Tyler's apartment with gifts for the newborn. We brought loads of presents for our granddaughter, like swaddles, baby carriers, diapers, and formula. Emily looked a bit worn out but seemed well. I noticed her eyes turn cold when she saw me but I was too excited to see my granddaughter to care. The baby was sleeping peacefully in her crib. Seeing Tyler as a father was deeply moving. He looked more mature. I laid out the groceries I had bought on the table. Thinking they wouldn't have had time to cook, I brought plenty of ready-to-eat meals for Tyler and Emily. As I started to prepare the meal in the kitchen, Emily strangely insisted. I'll do it. Please sit down. You don't have to push yourself. I said, but Emily pushed me down into a chair. It's okay, really. Feeling a strange pressure from Emily's behavior, I reluctantly sat down. As Emily served the side dishes on plates in front of Ken and Tyler. Here you go, please enjoy. I was thinking my portion would come later when Emily only placed one plate on the table. But not in front of me, but at her own seat. I had a bad feeling about this but kept quiet. Oops, my bad. I forgot your portion. Ken and Tyler laughed. It seemed like I was the only one with a bad premonition. However, Emily's next action made even Ken and Tyler freeze. She placed instant noodles in front of me. We only have enough for the family. I couldn't comprehend what Emily was saying. As I sat frozen, Emily, laughing, added insult to injury. You're not family. You're a stranger. Isn't that obvious? I couldn't grasp what Emily meant by not family. It dawned on me that Emily's feelings towards me hadn't changed at all. That's when Ken stood up. And then, shall we head home? All Ken said was that, before heading towards the entrance. Yes. I stood up and followed Ken. In the apartment lobby, I apologized to Ken. I'm sorry for what happened. Ken looked at me with a gentle smile. It's Emily. Who should be sorry? What happened? I poured out everything to Ken like breaking a dam about how Emily suddenly changed her attitude towards me and she pretended to be friendly in front of Ken and Tyler. Ken looked into my eyes and nodded slowly. I asked Ken why he believed everything I said. Well, I never would have thought Emily could do something like that. I would think the same if I were in Ken's shoes. Emily had been playing her cards well. You wouldn't lie, especially, not to speak all of someone. Ken trusted me. That made me incredibly happy. Ken murmured as if to himself. It would be unthinkable for me, your husband, not to believe you. 
tears started to well up in my eyes. Ken handed me a handkerchief with a laugh. It's also my fault for not realizing it sooner. That couldn't be helped. I had kept it a secret, after all. I'm really sorry. Ken's words made my tears unstoppable. Don't worry about it. I'm here for you. Thank you. I said, my voice choked with tears. How dependable Ken was. I was moved by Ken's kindness. As I was about to leave the apartment building's lobby, my phone rang. Checking the screen, it was from Tyler. Feeling sorry for ruining the celebration of our first grandchild, I answered the call. Tyler's call was to say, I want to talk things over properly, so please come back. He wanted to apologize for Emily's rudeness and also mentioned that Emily's behavior had been odd. I consulted with Ken and we decided to return together. Opening the front door, Tyler welcomed us. Instead of the living room, Tyler guided us to the nursery, which was still being set up. There was a study desk and a bed, and I couldn't help but laugh at how eager they seemed. I'm really sorry about Emily. You guys have been having trouble for a while, haven't you? It seemed like Tyler had noticed something. Back when there was yelling in the kitchen, you were having trouble then, too, right? That's right. I had made up a story about a cockroach to Tyler. Tyler had realized it. After getting married, I explained to Tyler that Emily's attitude had changed quite quickly. Tyler listened silently, but his fists were clenched tightly. I'm truly sorry. Tyler believed what I said. I had thought Tyler might defend Emily and call my story a lie. Tears started to well up in my eyes again. Emily and I have decided to get a divorce. Ken and I were so surprised that we couldn't find the words to speak. Why? Somehow, I managed to utter just that one word. Ken nodded in agreement. I'll explain everything now. Tyler said, then headed out of the room towards the living room. Ken and I followed him. I heard Emily squealing and screaming, no, from the living room. On the dining table, there was a divorce form with Tyler's signature on it, which I didn't miss. Seeing my face, Emily threw a magazine and a decorative item she had at hand towards me. One of them nearly hit me. At that moment, Ken shielded me, and a small decorative item hit him in the face. Ken's glasses flew off in a random direction. Maybe Emily hadn't expected it to hit anyone. She stopped moving, and her eyes went wide. Shocked, I looked at Ken's face to see blood streaming down from near his temple. Tyler, with an incredibly stern look, approached Emily and pinned down her hands. Do you even realize what you've done? Tyler's voice was louder than I had ever heard it before. Emily collapsed on the spot as if her legs had given out. I did nothing wrong. It's not my fault. It's her fault. Emily kept repeating the same words, seemingly in shock. Tyler looked at me with a sad expression. Right after we got married, Emily went to visit you, remember? I tried to recall when that was. That moment, I realized what felt off back then. 
I just realized the discomfort I felt back then. Yes, Emily had visited me alone at that time. At that time, Emily came to me asking for a loan. It was a loan that Tyler didn't know about. So, I said, first, you should talk to Tyler about it. At that time, she said, okay, and immediately went back home. Since she never came to me again to discuss it, I thought it was resolved. I kept this to myself, so Ken didn't know. Ken looked at me surprised. I'm sorry for keeping silent. I felt bad for Emily and didn't tell you. I hate that goody two shoes attitude of yours. Suddenly, Emily lashed out at me with harsh words. That was quite a nasty way to speak. About that loan, Emily had borrowed money from somewhere else and repaid it. Then, Tyler shared with me about Emily's spending habits. Emily has always been extravagant with money. She likes to use expensive ingredients and loves brand name goods. When Tyler met Emily, she already had debts. I talked to Emily, advising her not to take on any more debts. I also told her that if she didn't, I couldn't associate with her, and she agreed. That time, Emily was apologizing while crying. Tyler looked down at Emily sadly. Anyway, I'm definitely not in the wrong. She's the one to blame. Emily insisted she wasn't at fault, but it was inconvincing. Tyler and Ken looked at Emily with dispassionate eyes. Cut it out. Enough, enough, enough. Emily started crying and throwing a tantrum. We couldn't handle her and kept our distance. Just when Emily was about to smash a ceramic ornament on the floor, the baby in the crib started crying. As I rushed to soothe the baby, Emily yelled out, Shut up! Why is this brat crying? We were all shocked at Emily's outburst. Everyone's just getting in my way, shut up! The baby, startled by Emily's yelling, cried even harder. I tried to calm the crying baby, but there was no sign of stopping. Ah, uh, enough with the noise. Make that brat stop crying. This must be the real Emily, still speaking nastily. Emily's eyes were not sane. She seemed to have lost herself. Thinking of the baby's safety, I decided to take him to the nursery. Where are you taking her? Because I don't know what you might do. Let go of my baby. Emily was yelling. Emily, firstly, put down that ornament you're holding. Emily looked at the ceramic she was holding up. Is it okay to show your baby this side of you? Calmed by Ken's rational words, Emily seemed to come back to her senses. Quietly putting down the ornament, she covered her face with both hands. Emily started sobbing loudly. In the end, Ken and I decided to take care of the baby for the day. Let's leave Tyler and Emily to talk it over in their own time. The next day, Tyler came over to our house. His face looked worn but there was a certain freshness to his expression. In the living room, Ken and I listened to what Tyler had to say. It was horrifying. The conversation from yesterday was about Emily's excessive spending. Even Tyler's attempts at persuasion couldn't curb her spending habits. In fact, Emily's spending had gotten even worse. 
Having borrowed money from everywhere, Emily had set her sights on our assets. When I heard this, I understood why Emily had looked around our house when she first came. She was checking to see if there was anything of value in the house, or if we were wealthy. She then tried to extract money from me. But after being refused, she seemed to bear a grudge. After that, she started treating me harshly. I was scared and shivered. It wasn't that I was mean and refused to lend her money. I just wanted them to discuss it as a couple first. But Emily took it the wrong way. Tyler's story didn't end there. Since Emily had been acting strange lately, Tyler had hired a private investigator. The investigation revealed Emily's affair. Moreover, she had conspired with her lover to steal Ken's life insurance money. I was shocked. You mean, they planned to make it look like an accident? Tyler nodded silently. That was her plan. Tyler continued painfully. Emily had been tormenting me to drive me out of the house. The plan was to get rid of Ken at the time I was kicked out. What a dreadful plan. Emily had concocted such a terrible scheme. I trembled and wrapped my arms around myself. After receiving the report, Tyler had decided on divorce. He was looking for the right moment to talk about it when this incident happened. Tyler said he was going to report this to the police. We can't just stay silent about this. Indeed, if we let this slide, Emily might repeat her actions. Thinking she could get away with it would only embolden her. And she might do the same, or even worse, again. Emily needs to be properly judged, Tyler said. Ken agreed. That would be best. I also told Tyler. Tyler reported to the police, and Emily was arrested. Since she was trying to unjustly claim the insurance money, her arrest was inevitable. Emily's diary detailed the plan to get the insurance money. Tyler and Emily's divorce was finalized while Emily was in jail. Emily apparently claimed custody, but of course, custody was granted to Tyler. Even the lawyers seemed dismayed by Emily's claim to custody. If Emily is prosecuted, she and her co-conspirator will likely receive prison sentences. I hope Emily seriously reflects and faces her crimes behind bars. Not only did it ruin Tyler's life, but it also caused a great deal of trouble for the child that was born. The assault on Ken did not become a legal case because Ken didn't file a complaint. It was a kindness unique to Ken. Since Emily left, peace has returned to my heart. I can sleep soundly at night, and I don't get palpitations anymore when I visit Tyler's house. Living with Ken, just the two of us, has been peaceful. The times when Emily was causing turmoil feel like a lie to me now. Tyler and my granddaughter are living together. Fortunately, Ken and I live nearby. We help with anything we can, including daycare drop-offs and pickups and meals. Above all, it's a joy to witness my granddaughter's growth up close. At this rate, Ken and I might be able to see our granddaughter's high school graduation. Because the granddaughter was a baby, she doesn't remember her mother. 
It might be sad, but it's probably for the best not having such a mother. Besides, it seems Tyler is seeing someone. My granddaughter whispered to me as if it were a secret. I'm looking forward to Tyler saying, there's a woman I want you to meet.